We're going to install Virtual Smart Zone Data Plane version 5.0 on ESXi. In the description box below, we've included information and links to resources that can assist you. Additionally, please be sure to check out the Ruckus How To Hub. There you will find great information including KB articles, documents, and videos on all of your favorite Ruckus products. We're always adding new content, so check back often. Now, let's dig in. All right, before we start real quick, let's cover system requirements. We're gonna be using an OVA file, so the requirements are built into that, but we need to understand the resources it's gonna take. So this is supported on VMware ESXi 5.5 or later, KVM on CentOS 7.0 64-bit. Now we're gonna need a minimum of three cores per instance. We're also gonna need six gigabytes of memory and at least a 10 gigabyte hard drive. Now, one thing that you have to take special note of, virtual smart zone version, it should always be the same or higher than the virtual smart zone data plane version that you're installing or connecting to. To install VSED, we're gonna deploy an OVA template. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we don't have any filtering between VSED and VSZ. They're gonna to connect to each other, so we wanna make sure we don't have any type of access list or firewall filtering in between, or if they're on different subnets that we can route between them. We verified that, everything's good to go on our end, so we're gonna go ahead and deploy it. We're gonna to navigate to the host we wanna deploy the template on. Right click, and we'll click on Deploy OVF Template. Now within this screen, we're gonna go ahead and browse and select the file that we downloaded. This is the .ova file. So we select that, we click on open, and we'll click on next. Now it's gonna give us a synopsis of what the OVA file contains. It's version 5.0, download size, size on disk, and we'll go ahead and click on next. Now here's our license agreement. We'll go ahead and accept that and click on next as well. Now, we're going to install this on the main data center within our ESXi deployment. I don't need to put this in a subfolder. So we'll go ahead and click on Next here again. Here you can name it something different. I've left it default just so that we can keep track of where the VSZD or VSZ data plane install is. Now, here you can change your provisioning on the disk if you want. We have a core VM infrastructure. We're going to go ahead and install it on that data store. We'll click on next here again, and it's gonna validate it. Now this validation can take a couple minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and skip past that, and then we'll continue with the deployment. That was pretty quick. Now we're just gonna verify our NIC interfaces. So the VM network, that's gonna be our management interface. The other network, that's actually gonna be our data network. We'll show you that in setup later. Here we see a synopsis. We're just gonna click on finish. Now it's gonna go ahead and initialize this, and then we'll be ready to start setup. Okay, now all we have to do is power it on. So we're gonna power on the virtual machine by clicking the power on virtual machine button. Then on the virtual machine itself, we're gonna right click and go to open console. Since this is a new install, we're gonna use default credentials. The login is admin and the password is admin. Then we'll type enable or shorten it to en and use the password of admin again. Now we're gonna type setup. And once we type setup, we're gonna say that we do wanna modify the host name. This is an example, I'm just gonna call it VDP 5-0. And then for IP config, we're gonna use IPv4 only and we're gonna manually set that. So when we set it, I'm gonna use the IP addressing that our lab team has given me. Again, this IP scheme will be different on your side, but we'll go ahead and configure the IP address and then we're gonna configure the subnet mask and then we're gonna configure the gateway. And then once that's done, we'll go ahead and confirm it. Now, as we finish this up, one thing I want to point out, this is the management interface that we're configuring. That's always first in these installs. Now we're going to configure the data interface. We're going to do that manually or statically assign the IP address. So we'll go ahead and input the IP address. Now we're going to input the net mask. After that, we're going to input the gateway and confirm the settings. If you have a typo or you might have used the wrong network here or the IP address, you can go back and redo it. Now we'll go ahead and input our primary and secondary DNS servers. Now, once we input the secondary DNS server and hit enter, here you're gonna note that it's going to start to apply these settings. It's gonna take a little bit, usually only takes a minute or two, and then once it comes back, we can finalize the setup. We're not using a NAT IP address in this environment, so to leave it blank and not use it, we're just gonna hit enter here. Once we do that, we need to input the smart zone controller IP address. We're gonna go ahead and enter that and then hit enter, and when we do, it's gonna ask us if we wanna connect to it. We'll say yes. Remember, you'll have to approve this in smart zone later. Now, we have to change the password. Linux installations, you can usually use a dictionary password. It'll warn you about it, but let you use it. Smart zone will not. So we're gonna enter a non-dictionary password once we're done, that's it. We've completed it. VDP is there. Just need to approve it in the controller and we're ready to go.
Okay, let's approve VDP on the controller. So from the dashboard, we can navigate over to system. And from system, we can navigate down to cluster. Now, inside of cluster, we can see the VDP that we installed. It's here. It shows that it's initializing and it's pending. That means we need to approve it. So we're going to highlight it and click on approve. Now, as it goes through its approval process, you can refresh the page and you might see it go from configuring and eventually it will go to managed. I went ahead and refreshed the page. Now you can see the VDP is showing managed. Now that we've done that, I want to show you how to change the controller IP address that VDP has pointed to if your controller IP should ever change. So you can SSH to any of your VDP deployments. This is a different one. You log in, you enable, you get your passwords in there. And then what you need to do here is not run setup, but you need to type config. Now at config, we're just going to type controller and hit enter. And then from here, we're going to say IP space and then the IP address and we'll hit enter again. Now, the thing you need to note here is that once you do this, you can type end to exit out of config, but you need to reboot for the changes to take effect. So you'll need to be in a maintenance window. Also, you'll have to log into the controller and approve VDP. That's it. We're complete. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. Before you leave, don't forget to check the description box below. There you're going to find great resources and information on this topic. And also within the How-To Hub, you're going to find great information and resources on many more. Thanks for watching.